if you're not embodying your boundaries, you're not setting boundaries effectively. And I'm going to teach you how to do that in this super short, super sweet video. Let's check it out. A boundary defines your identity. It describes what you will do, what you won't do, what you are available for, what you want to create, what you don't want to create. And it's impossible to set an effective boundary if you are not embodied within your boundary. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. Embodiment generally just describes your present connection to your body. So you're not projecting into the future. You're not just repeating the past. You're actually embodied. You are present in your body body such that you can adapt fluidly and effectively to all the changes that happen around you because we can't control change it just happens in your relationships and in your environments so when things become chaotic you're like i'm good i'm not getting triggered i'm not getting activated i'm not in a defense mechanism i am embodied my nervous system's in a rest state I am processing life as it is happening around me and I'm making conscious decisions about how I will respond to those things which I am out of control of so that I stay in alignment with what? My boundaries. So embodiment is your presence. It is the connection between your mind and body in the present moment and your boundaries create the container for the life that you want to live. So embodied boundaries means that you are connected to your inner voice and your intuition. You are connected to your body, to your present moment, enough to communicate very transparently what you need, what you desire, and what you expect. This sometimes can also look like a requirement of the people and things around you for you to participate with those people and things in creating and living life, right? So your embodied boundaries always start with what? Emotion regulation. If you can't feel your feelings, then you won't know what your feelings are telling you. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that a feeling is simply a sensation in the body, tingling of the hands, flushing of the cheeks, flipping of the stomach, racing of the mind. It's a sensation in your body paired with a conscious thought in which you make meaning out of that sensation. So my stomach can be flipping and I can go, hmm, that must mean I'm really anxious and I need to control the future and freak out and avoid or dissociate or get angry at people. Or... I can be like, my stomach's flipping. I'm so excited to go on this trip, to meet this person, to connect, to play, to create, right? Totally different meaning, same sensation in the body. So you decide what you feel, but your feelings are always wisdom that will help you choose what action you need to take to stay in alignment with your boundaries and the life you desire to create. So if you don't learn how to process your feelings, what happens? If you don't have the information as a kid about what to do with anxiety or anger or depression or fear or shame or guilt or embarrassment, you're going to shut it down and you're going to avoid it because it's too overwhelming to your system and to your conscious mind to just sit in this feeling and not know what to do with it. These are what I call indicator emotions. They always indicate to you that you need to take a new action to stay in alignment. When you spend years avoiding the anxiety or shutting the depression down or feeling completely overwhelmed by these emotions, you're not in alignment with your boundaries. Now, as an adult or a fully autonomous person who's watching this video, you've likely heard about boundaries and you're going out trying to set them saying, no, I'm not going to do that. I am going to do this. You can't talk to me this way. This is what I want. This is what I need. And maybe you're feeling stuck because it doesn't feel like people are responding the way you want them to respond. You don't see any changes happening. You don't see the life you want to create unfolding around you. And that is likely because you're not feeling the feelings that are actually informing those needs, which means a part of you believes you're not worthy of having your needs met. It's not safe to be seen. It's not safe to take up space. It's not safe to be in the present and let go of the safety of controlling the future. It's not safe to be connecting, right? It's safer to avoid. And so when you try to speak your boundaries, you're just using words, but communication 
is like a really high percentage nonverbal, right? Something like 80, 90% of our communication is nonverbal. So just using words to communicate boundaries isn't gonna work if the underlying belief being held in your body is that you don't deserve to take up space, that it's not safe to be seen, that you fear people will not respect you, they won't think you're worthy, they will have a negative perception of you, right? That's what's gonna be communicated when you don't embody your boundaries. So take some steps back. I know when we're adults, we think, oh, we just need to use language to communicate and that's fine. We just blah, blah, blah. And then things change. We know that's not true. I did 10 years plus of mindset work on boundary setting, on trauma healing and attachment therapies before realizing that breath work was one of the fastest ways to heal the nervous system. And all those stuck emotions I had avoided my whole life was what was getting in the way of me feeling the way I wanted to feel, living the life I wanted to live, and actually setting boundaries from this place that was fully embodied and centered, no matter what chaos was happening around me. I knew what I needed to say and what I needed to do to stay in alignment and stay in a state of peace. Am I perfect? God, no. I get angry sometimes. I get defensive sometimes. Sometimes somebody says something to me and I feel it bubbling up or I'm just like, ah, boundary. <laughs> I'm human, but I get to use my breath. I get to use my creative coping strategies, journaling, walking, going out in nature, dancing, music. The possibilities are endless. And I get to come back down and I get to try again from this embodied state. So this is what I want you to do. If you don't feel like boundaries are working for you, if you feel stuck, if you're confused, go back to emotion regulation. Connect to the feelings that you feel in your body. Watch the other videos that I have on fully processing your feelings through to release. I want you to amp up on your emotional literacy. So what are the sensations that you feel in your body? How can you describe them? When do they come up in your life? What emotions might be hiding behind those? Check out the feelings wheel. I also have a video up on that. And then get in conversation with those emotions. What is your anxiety trying to tell you? What is the depression trying to tell you? Literally sit there silently, feel the feeling in the body, ask the emotion, ask the sensation even. If you're not sure where to connect to the emotion, ask the sensation in your body. What do you need me to know? What do you need me to do? In order to access your inherent wholeness, okay? That's it. What do you need me to know? What do you need me to do? Trust whatever that sensation and that inner wisdom tells you. The more you do that every single day, the more you're going to build that connection to your intuition and your inner voice. The more you're going to clear those fears and those stuck emotions that are getting in the way of you setting boundaries that actually people respect because you respect them, right? People will witness you and listen to you because you are witnessing yourself and listening to yourself. And then they're going to start to clear out of your system so that you can be at peace as you respond to your environment on a day-to-day -day basis. Embodied boundaries. You embody it fully by feeling it fully, by not keeping things stuck through avoidance and rejection, by actually learning how to process everything you've experienced so far that you haven't processed and everything that you will experience in your lifetime. It's an ever revolving experience that you're going to have setting boundaries and you need to do it from an embodied state, a present state, a connected and centered state of being. Breathwork is really good for supporting this as well. You know, you're in the right place for that and any other creative coping practices that bring you down into the emotion and help you integrate and release it. Don't choose anything that pulls you out of the emotion, right? No substances. <laughs> No overconsumption, no dissociative TV or video games, or just like blah, 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 complaining about your problems to friends, but not actually taking responsibility for it. Go into the emotions. It's safe to feel. It's safe to connect and to surrender to the flow of your life and learn how to actually process it so that you can be connected to your inner voice. From there, you use the high level cognitive -y consciousness tool of language to set boundaries. You use the tool of language to create the container so that people align with what you want to create. But you got to start here because that's what's being projected out. And that is what people will mirror once you're in alignment. Yeah. Okay. 
Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Let me know how these techniques go for you. And like and subscribe for more. I love you so much. I'll see you in the next one.